you can always spot the sucker in the draft rooms. Doesn't matter what year it is, what draft. Sure, some years, some years you're just not going to have it. You might, you might be in a draft with some smart people, but usually there's always a sucker or two in the drafts. And you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that dummy that walks away from your draft and goes, well, I guess, uh, you know, the, the late round doesn't look good. He's okay. That guy's, oh, God, what did I do? Well, at least my first five rounds look good. It's like, yeah, obviously your first five rounds, everyone's first five rounds look good. Everyone's first five rounds should look good because those are all desirable players. Those are all the guys that are being drafted early because, you know, they're kind of the surefire should play will. Maybe they won't, but they should type of players. The sucker, though, the sucker. And this is where the thinking gets in your way. This is where you let bias and an unwillingness to take even the most marginal amount of risk will put you in the back end of your standings every single year in fantasy drafts. Because the sucker will take stands and they will reach on players early in drafts. You know, you'll have guys that are like reaching on a, a fourth round player in the second round. Even though ADPs are the sharpest in the early rounds, you know that those are the good players. You might like a guy, but if your draft spot doesn't cater to getting him, where you should, or at least within a few picks of that, you don't reach on them because you're passing up on better players. So they go ahead and they'll take shots and, and take risks early. And there's guys that they really like, they must have them, right? You got to have those guys. And then they look at their draft at the end and go like, yeah, you know, I like these guys, but I ended up with a bunch of slop late in my drafts. And the truth is like, you know, what doesn't win drafts? being decent at drafting in the early rounds because even a moron could do that. Like you don't need to be good at fit. I could, I could go upstairs and grab my wife and be like, here, draft this team through the first six rounds, five rounds. And she could be like, here's what I did. I don't know any of these guys. Is it okay? And I'd go, yeah, that's fine. We'll make it work. Like just draft the guys at the top of the list. Don't draft two quarterbacks in the first five rounds or three tight ends. And we'll make it out of this one okay. Anybody can do it. And that's the problem. You're not good at doing anything if you can draft in the early rounds. Because we all can, even if you don't know football. It's being able to take stands and take risks in the late rounds. And understand what risks make sense and what risks are stupid. Right? Like, there's being different and being contrarian in drafts where it makes a lot of sense. Where you're leveraging the position you're really just playing a numbers game because in the back end of drafts, the 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 18 rounds and some of your drafts that are extended, of course, like underdog and, and other leagues in best ball, those are just, it's just a numbers game. You want to shift the odds in your favor and take highly ambiguous, unknown situations and take risks there because that's where you might find the diamond in the rough. That's where you might find the Garrett Wilson of 2022, who was drafted as the wide receiver 60 and finished as a top 20 receiver. Or the Justin Jefferson, who was a 12th round pick in 2020 and finished as the wide receiver seven. I could go on for days about this when you're looking at some of these late round picks that make or break your draft. It sounds crazy, right? And like, yeah, you're going to be able to make waiver wire picks. You're going to be able to to make trades and and pull guys off the waiver and stream them and drop them all of that and that's going to go a long way for you no doubt if you work the waiver well you can make up for some bad draft picks of course but i mean look at amon ross st brown he was the 75th receiver off the board in 2021 as a rookie finished as the wide receiver 22 uh 22 20 2019 2019 debo samuel dk metcalf and terry mclaren all rookies you see a trend here we're all drafted 12th round or later. All of them finished top 30 at their position. So here's what I'm trying to say without talking in circles. The rookie wide receivers, the young wide receivers that we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know the type of production we're going to get out of them are better all day long than the Tyler Boyds and the Hunter Renfros and the Donovan People Jones, right? And the KJ Osborns late in the draft. You know, you could get through your first starting line. You get through your starting lineup and you like your team. What happens if you have injuries? What happens if one of those guys, like last year, you know, we saw a lot of that where guys that were drafted early just didn't pan out. This still happens. Like surefire, great blue chip players sometimes just 
oddly enough, don't work out or they get hurt or their team is such dog shit that they suffer as a result and the numbers don't aren't up to snuff. Take Najee Harris, for, an, for example. He wasn't great. He dealt with the, the, the injury. His offensive line stunk. You drafted the guy in the first round. Now, you're really hoping that you have someone late in that draft that can make up for it. What happens with wide receivers all the time, too. A quarterback regresses, things happen. You got some guys on the bench that are going to put you in business. Because, yeah, sure, you could draft Tyler Boyd, but you're never going to wake up on a Thursday morning ready to set your lineup. Yeah, all right, let's take a look at this. Week five. All right, I need a flex player. Oh, Tyler Boyd. Yeah, love him. Love, love Tyler Boyd. And I drafted him because, you know, I know he can give me eight fantasy points a week. He's safe. Who wants safe? You could take Tyler Boyd any week. An archetype of Tyler Boyd. You could take a, a style of Tyler Boyd, a version of him on any other team, off the waiver wire, plug him into your lineup as a streaming option any week, and just drop him after that. Like, those are the type of guys that people feel safe drafting. And that's why you end up getting crushed in your leagues at the first sign of distress, at the first injury, at the first starter that you drafted early playing poorly because you took no shots late in the draft. And I'll be completely clear about this and uh, transparent because you guys already know this. And maybe you don't, maybe you're new and I hope this helps you. Most of these late round picks aren't going to work out. But why wouldn't you wanna just take a ton of flyers on guys that, okay, I'm not drafting them as starters, I'm not even drafting them as like top level bench players, right? In a 12 team league. I'm just drafting them as guys that if they are good and if they have a breakout season as a first or second year player, specifically at the wide receiver position, because rookie running backs generally always go earlier, then I could win my leagues. Imagine if you had Justin Jefferson, and maybe you guys did in 2020. You got, you got him in double digit rounds in the 12th round. And he's in every single week start. And every week, wide receiver one, as a matter of fact. Is that an outlier? Sure. But Garrett Wilson was a strong wide receiver too every week of the season with garbage quarterbacks throwing him the football. Go look through the recent drafts. It happens all the time. And go look at the most recent years of wide receivers, rookie wide receivers that have put up 1,000-yard seasons. It's a lot of them. And they're not all first-round picks. You know, A.J. Brown in that same year, Debo Samuel, D.K. Metcalf, and Terry McLaurin, he was drafted outside of the top 50 at his position. Had a 1,000-yard season. Are you going to land all of them? Of course you're not. And chances are you might not get any of them this year that have huge years. But would you rather that? Or would you rather Donovan People jones Or would you rather Tyler Boyd behind Jamar Chase, behind T. Higgins, possibly behind even Irv Smith? Give me shots on these rookies. Give me shots on a Jonathan Mingo. And here's 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 why you have to change the mindset, all right? If, when I put it to you like this, I hope this crystallizes everything and you go, oh, damn, that actually makes more sense than I would have considered. When you look at the guys that I talked about, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, all of them, right? Justin Jefferson, even to some extent. What do they all have in common as rookies? They all got drafted on the teams where you looked at the wide receiving core and went, I have no idea which one of these guys it's going to be this year. I have, no, I have no idea who it's going to be. And most people go, yeah, but it's not going to be the rookie fourth rounder, right? It's not going to be the rookie late second rounder. But it was because we have no idea. You look at Jonathan Mingo and you go, all right, well, it's, it's a, he's a rookie. He's got a rookie quarterback throwing in the football. Yeah, both of that's true. And like the odds aren't in his favor. But you know it is in your favor? The fact that Adam Thielen's in the twilight of his career and outside of uh, his sophomore season, DJ Shark hasn't done anything worthwhile. And he's just gotten shopped around, right? Like, give me spots like that. Give me spots like Nico Collins or hell, even John Mechie, who missed his whole rookie season because of, I think, leukemia. Give me those guys. All right, bad quarterback situation. I get it, but what if he's good? What if he's good? Robert Woods is the de facto wide receiver one in Houston right now. And you might be looking at me and going, what is he talking about? This is crazy. Yeah, is it any crazier than drafting Tyler Boyd there? <laughs> Tyler Boyd has zero upside. Even when, even if a Jamar Chase or a T. Higgins were to go down, Tyler Boyd is still not somebody that has 
a potential big ceiling, and we know that. Sure, his floor might be higher than these guys, but you're not slotting these guys in as your wide receiver two or your three or even your flex, loving their seven-point floor. So give me the guys on these teams. CJ Stroud might get the start, might be good. What if he's okay as a rookie? And what if Robert Woods is just as bad as he was in Tennessee when they had no other pass catching options and he still stunk? We're doing a video on drafting mistakes, but the biggest mistake that you could make all season long, all summer long, is not signing up on Underdog Fantasy and getting your first match deposit bonus 100% up to $100 and starting to draft way sooner than all of your buddies. Not to mention, have a shot at much bigger prize pool than any of the other fantasy leagues you're going to be in. Underdog Fantasy, not only first match deposit bonus 100% up to $100, $15 million prize pool this year in Best Ball Mania 4. And in Best Ball, all you're doing is drafting your favorite teams, up to 150 of them if you'd like in this contest. You're not setting lineups each week. There's no waiver moves. There's no trades. The lineup that you have, 18 rounds, is the lineup that you get throughout the entirety of the season. It is the best, most streamlined version of fantasy football, and you're getting $100 for free out of the gate to add on to those lineups. I love it. I'm drafting best ball literally every single day. I've done dozens and dozens of drafts already, and I'm going to keep doing them because what else am I supposed to do in the summer months right now other than watch baseball? And quite frankly, I'm very, very sick of it. But you've got the slow puppy, the puppy, $500,000, $5 to enter, best ball mania, $25 to enter, $15 million prize pool. The link is in the description. The link is in chat. Don't click that. Get your deposit bonus. Don't sit on your couch and wait for late August to draft in your friends and family league. Start drafting today. Put yourself in the running for some huge money. And don't blame me when your wife comes to you and says, what the heck have you been doing all night? And you go, listen, I'm drafting on underdog. I got three rounds to go. It's my 10th and final draft of the night. Leave me alone. I'm kidding. Link in the description and in chat, underdog fantasy. We'll see you over there. Or what about Rashi Rice and Sky Moore in Kansas City? These are guys that were drafted 54th overall last year in Sky Moore. And this year, Rice, 55th overall, the Kansas City Chiefs traded up to get him. So now you have Kadarius Toney. We don't know what the deal is with his injury. Uh, who knows? Like, he, he may be hobbled all season. He may be out for a while. You've got Marquez Valdez-Scantling, who was really just a disappointment last year. No Juju Smith-Schuster. They don't have anybody else. Like They have Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. But there isn't one guy in this offense that you could look me in the eyes and go, that's their wide receiver one this year. For all we know, it's Justin Ross who's getting snaps with the first team. This is an awesome opportunity to take a shot on arguably the best offense in the league and hope that maybe, especially if you're doing multiple drafts, you know, or best ball, maybe you land the wide receiver one on the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes throwing him the football could be a huge season and you're paying absolutely nothing for it. You know, think about all of these, these potential rookies. How about Jalen Hyatt? Young rookie, third round rookie. Could he stink? Absolutely. Is there serious competition at the wide receiver position? Yeah, I guess in the sense of like Isaiah Hodgins and Darius Slayton and Wandell Robinson, if he ever gets back on the field. But do any of those guys stand out to you as Man, that is a clear-cut, bona fide wide receiver one that is really going to undoubtedly take away opportunities from the rookie Hyatt. No. Maybe he stinks. Maybe he's no good. And we look back on this video a couple of years from now and Hyatt's not even in the league. Or maybe he has a huge season and becomes Daniel Jones' number one target because nobody on that team is an elite talent at the position. Not yet, at least. That's how I like to play these late rounds. Now, that's not to say that you that every late round pick has to be some mega long shot flyer, but you want some of them. Don't ever go through the later the later rounds of your draft and be like, man, I, I don't trust the rookie and I don't trust this team. So instead I'll take Hunter Renfro. Man, I don't trust these guys. I don't trust this team. Look how bad all the receivers are. Let me take KJ Osborne because he was decent last year. Yeah, but they have Justin Jefferson. They just drafted uh, Addison. They have TJ Hawkinson, who's going to command a huge target share. KJ Osborne is who we knew he was going to be. 
And if not, you can come back here and talk shit in the comments. I leave them open and I'm used to it. But I think by now, you guys get what I'm saying. It's as simple as that. Flip that switch in your head. Change your mindset. Understand that the later drafts are where you can, later ends of drafts are where you can actually win them. You want to make smart waiver wire moves. Trades or whatever, you know, if you're fleecing people, that's great. But the most trades you see with semi-educated people in fantasy football, it's just lateral moves and nothing really happens. You know what I mean? You just get the guy that you want. They get the guy that they wanted and nothing changes. But waiver wire, streaming players, all of that is important. But imagine if you were to draft, let's say rounds 12 through 16, 12 through 17, 12 through 18. All right. And you were to hit on one, not two, not three, not four, not five one young player unproven player on an offense with pass catcher speaking receivers here that doesn't have any clear cut number one and it's totally up for grabs imagine if you hit on one of those who becomes a top 20 a top 15 i mean J justin jefferson sure it's a long shot but say top 20 top 15 receiver that you're sliding in as your wide receiver to every single week and you drafted him in the last five six rounds of your draft you have an immediate and distinct edge over everyone else in your league, assuming the early rounds of your drafts, you didn't do anything stupid and didn't reach heavily to try and get someone just because you needed them. So I hope that helps you guys. You can follow me at Lofty underscore D on Twitter, by the way. My DMs are open. Always happy to answer questions. Leave a comment. Let me know, too, who you're like looking at this strategy, taking this approach. Let me know who you guys are that late in the drafts you go, you know what, if I can get some of those guys, I want them because they could win my leagues. And if they don't, it doesn't matter. I don't lose anything. We're going to be dropping most of the guys late on our bench anyway. When you think of it that way, where does the risk come into play? Take those spots where you're playing the numbers game and the odds work in your favor. And one of them just might become the Garrett Wilson of 2022. But yeah, hit me up on Twitter. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful. Share it with your friends. We'll be back with a whole lot more of this leading up to the football season. Appreciate you guys watching as always. We'll see you back here for the next one. Peace.